Nice to meet everyone. I'm super excited to be here and like to thank Adam and the team to invite us uh, to give this talk. I actually tried to request for five more minutes, but I couldn't get it, so I'll be really, really quick on this one. Um, I meant to share you know, the, the amazing story of GoodNotes uh, over the past 13 years of how we started as an offline first application to, to where we are now. Uh, I'm not the co-founder, I'm the VP of engineering of GoodNotes. Um, I joined two and a half years ago, but I'm gonna share a little bit of um, the history all the way back then. Um, before joining GoodNotes, I was another startup founder, lived in the Bay Area actually for my past 15 years until six months ago, moved to London. Um, I have this interesting basketball story I'm gonna skip today, but my previous startup is about a mobile AI computer vision based basketball training app that fortunately got invested by the NBA and, and it combined both of my basketball and tech passion a lot. If you know who that is and you like basketball, feel free to grab me afterwards. Uh, one more thing I want to tell you about myself is my work back in Apple. So my team back in Apple actually um, built the collaborative um, capability of iWorks and bring it from full native to, to the web and also the real-time collaboration. So back then we used operational transformation, which is um, exactly the opposite of offline first, but I'm gonna compare that a little bit uh, uh, with CLDT, which is what we are using in GoodNotes right now. Um, so that's a little bit about me. Now, uh, I wonder any of you heard about GoodNotes or you have been using GoodNotes? Okay, <laughs> quite a few hands, uh, thank you. Uh, GoodNotes is a primarily like a stylus-based note-taking app uh, on iPad. In fact, recently we, we've been expanding to other platforms already and also like other type of input, but still most of our user and use cases are on Apple Pencil and Stylus. Um, we've been there for 15, 13 years, um, fortunately become one of the most popular applications on, on iPad and now serving 30 million monthly active users. Um, primarily our users are students and educators. I'm always amazed by how they can create these like deliberate notes <laughs> on our simple application. Uh, they felt almost like artists and, <laughs> than students to me. Um, all these are organic content that created by them, share, share in different social media um, and help us grow the, the company. Um, I do like to share a little bit about the history. So GoodNotes actually launched right at the second iPad launch in 2011. It was really early day, um, no Apple Pencil. I think Stylus is still very primitive. Um, but this whole story actually fit very well of what Martin said in the morning. Um, very small team. In fact, um, our founder, Stephen, started this application in 2011 when he was a student, college student studying math, building that for himself, and run it for the first five years without hiring anyone. Um, and I think at the point of 2015, when Apple Pencil came out, it's still one person company, we already reached one million users at that time. Pretty successful business as a one-person company. And, and he started to hire people. <laughs> he felt like, oh, there's some opportunity now. Apple Pencil comes out. And the business also grew very well since then because Apple pretty much created a stylus-based uh, business, right? Like Apple noticed GoodNotes is one of the most popular applications and start featuring, and, and the story keep goes on. Um, by the time of 2019, GoodNotes still primarily local first or offline first, but we started to build uh, iCloud Sync and the collaboration technology behind it. And at that time, I would say we're still like a company or a team less than 10 developers, already serving 10 million uh, monthly active users. So I, I pretty much agree with what Martin said this morning about how local first can enable a small team with very small capital to build a pretty good application Maybe the only catch is it, it doesn't necessarily to be a serving small amount of users because I think we do serve a pretty decent amount of users already by then. Um, and you know, like long story short, um, get to last year, GoodNotes is already in version six and um, we introduced a lot more AI. We put the app in other platform last year. We changed our business model to subscription um, and, and that's the moment that it turns out we have to build something more than just local first, which I'll touch a little bit as well. Um, but uh, it, it does make the, the whole tech stack a bit harder, and, and also we, we're now a much bigger team than before. So um, it's quite obvious why we started with local first, because you know, back then it's really like most of these productivity applications is single player. And as I just said, uh, it's a very small team. So the local first tech stack actually enable us to build that um, much easier um, back then. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize a bit more is the, the low cost perspective. 
It's not just about the, the server cost or the developer cost. Because of that, actually, GoodNox has always been like a one-time paid app of just $9.99. Uh, until last year, we turned to subscription, which is still $9.99 a year. Um, the fact that we're, we can sell in such a low cost, I believe, is the main reason to get us to such a popular state among students in particular. So we're still trying to keep this you know, like low cost um, in order to get more users. And being, having a lot of the application um, logic and a lot of the computation power on the client really enable that, um, because we, we now need to really look into the server cost and all these other things. Um, I want to share one more story. I think all these offline shares first experience still very applicable in nowadays. So um, while we put our application to cross-platform Android, um, Windows, and web last year, we, we do it as a web-based application, and we started to online. We started it as an online first application, and unfortunately, that got a pretty big backlash. And the biggest ask from our user is to make it offline um, enabled. So we turns out have to put a lot more effort to to re-enable that. Uh, so I have to say, like even recent days, um, offline first is super super important. Oh, I just got a few more minutes. <laughs> I'll be quick. So these are the tech stack we have. Um, pretty typical. I'm going to focus on the two top, um, event sourcing, CQRS, and CRDT. So um, <laughs> Alex is here. I'm very happy to meet him in person. Uh, event sourcing is something probably like familiar with many of you. The idea is like we basically capture all the operation from user. Uh, market has an event and represent a document based on a list of operations instead of a simple state on the, on the left hand side. Uh, you might feel a bit overwhelming to say, oh, you know, a document actually represented by this whole list of events, and we literally create that from scratch whenever, when, when, when the first time a user opens a document from a new device. Um, the performance is actually okay, um, and it gives us a lot of benefit um, for, for our application in particular. Basically, you can tell because we have all these operations in history, we can easily enable a lot of useful features for, for our productivity app, right? Like, um, you can do infinite undo, you can do infinite offline merge, um, we can even do something like um, we play all the user action until a certain point that we want. We have a feature uh, of audio recording right now that can combine your audio notes with your handwriting note and we play it uh, accordingly. So this kind of architecture actually helped to enable this kind of feature um, a lot easier than just keeping the whole state of the document. Um, the next one is CRS. It's actually like uh, something also um, mentioned a little bit from Johan this, this morning. Um, it's, separating, it's about separating the read and write model uh, to the extent of both in-memory model as well as database and even the logic to compute them. Um, one thing we noticed though, like this is good but may not be absolutely needed uh, because what happened in our application right now is like we find these two models extremely similar or almost the same. But it turns out um, adding a little bit of development burden on, oh, you know, what, what should be in the write, what should be in the uh, read, you know, that kind of stuff. So uh, while it's recommended maybe by Microsoft on these two patterns combined together, uh, we think it's not absolutely needed to use this, but uh, event sourcing is really helpful for us. Um, now, let's go a little bit into collaboration. I just want to do a very quick comparison between CLDT of, and OT because I, I, I learned a lot of OT uh, back in my day in Apple. Um, but in, in simple term, CLDT in some sense is much easier to implement because all the merge logic is embedded into the model layer, right? You can easily abstract, okay, we support these type of model and all the merge logic is there. You don't need to write the transformation logic per operation or per pair of operation actually. That's why, you know, like when you need to implement operational transformation, you need a server, first of all, and second, you indeed need to implement n times n transformation function, even though a lot of those are no op, <laughs> I have to say, but you do need to implement that and, and test that as well. Um, one thing I think OT is a little bit better is the flexibility, because you can embed a lot of user intent in the operation pair, so that you can say, okay, you know, in this type of situation, how I want to transform this operation. But again, the complication is just a, a, a bit more, or a bit too much than, than you know, the simplicity, right? Um, so it turns out we pick CLDT for good nooks. Um, otherwise, uh, we, I think I won't be here speaking. Um, <laughs> we only have this um, very simple LWW model, literally just that code, that can already sustain the whole good nooks collaboration. 
Um, you know, we can talk a lot more uh, after this talk. I, I love to share more and learn more from you guys. Um, but as simple as that. There's other tricky scenario like, oh, moving parent, deletion, but we can work around a lot of that through some tricks and also through UI layer representation. Um, it's super simple until, you know, like one feature we require recently um, is the collaborative text editing. That's really complex. Um, but I'm glad, you know, like we, we have auto merge to rescue. Um, I actually read this paper even before, um, you know, we have the requirement of text collaboration. And I found it fascinating that, you know, oh wow, CLDT can already support rich text collaboration. So um, we reached out to Martin, got a good chat, and, and started collaborating with auto merge. Alex is going to chat a lot about how auto merge works and maybe a little bit of how GoodNotes adopt to it. Um, but uh, we're very grateful to be working very closely with auto merge team. In fact, even at the level of defining how the API contract should work. Um, this feature is already working well internally, and we, we love to ship this hopefully in the next few months to, to a million of our users together with auto merge. Um, lastly, there's still a few more challenges we, we're going, um, going forward, uh, especially when we move to cross-platform. We, we have a lot of requirement about permission and sharing, account switching. Um, all these we can chat a lot more again after this. Um, but um, as Martin also alluded to, of local first doesn't mean local only. And you know, GoodNooks has a primarily consumer-based application. We believe our you know, main goal is to give the best user experience well, local first serve us very, very well. Um, we believe that in a combination of, you know, like capability online and, and local uh, offline enabled would give us the user, would give our user the best um, experience that, that we want to offer to them. And um, very quick, just one last thing. A recent realization that I wanted to share um, is that I felt like on-prem server may be back after we've been pushing cloud for so many years, maybe from the big company like Amazon, Google, and, and Microsoft. What happened is, um, while GoodNooks is primarily like a consumer-based application, we recently going to uh, institute, like Education Institute and, and, and B2B Institute. Quite surprisingly, a lot of them started to have their own on-prem services. Um, in fact, not surprisingly, started from Germany. Many of the school actually don't even want their notes to be synced to iCloud. They're asking for like a web dev protocol and sync the notes to their own server, right? So many of them actually turn off our, our synchronization uh, and okay for the student to use it offline. So um, I just want to say about this practical example that um, this could be also another opportunity for local first community to go back uh, in the future. That's all. Thank you. Thank you.